channel i'm back at it again with another insecure review this time it is season three episode three um it's actually been like two days because i started school and my computer broke and it was just a bunch of stuff going on and so this is going to be a super quick video i say that but i doubt it um, I actually have to go somewhere and I'm supposed to be there now. So I'm going to try to get my life together. I already did my foundation. I already did my eyebrows as y'all can see. So let's just get into the video talking about what happened in this recent episode. So um, before uh, you keep watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And uh, let's just get on to the video. Okay, let me put the chapstick on. So this most recent episode was called Backwards Like. And um, the first scene starts off with them in the bed. And literally, I was so mad that Issa was eating in Daniel's bed. And literally, he didn't do nothing about it. So that, that's why I personally knew that when they start getting it on, it was fake. Because personally, if I, if me, if you eating in my bed and just, if you're eating in my bed, I'm going to be mad. And I'm going to feel some type of way. And I'm going to say something. And Daniel literally just brushed it off. But I guess he he knows he's saying he knows how she is. So I guess it really doesn't matter. And that's just how they are. So I don't know. Maybe I was thinking too much about it. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. So basically, also when they started getting it on. And he handed her the chips when he was down there. No, that's not real. Because first of all, I feel like Issa wouldn't even um, kiss Daniel the way it started. So I know it was fake. I have to really, like when I'm watching the show, I'm really kind of like, oh dang. I'm really kind of like, after they tricked me in the last season, when her and, uh, when her and Lawrence low-key like got back together at the end. I've never been the same since then, so I be thinking everything fake. So that's why I just, I just knew, I just knew it wasn't real, and I just, I just don't picture Issa talking dirty. Is that weird? Like I don't know. But anyway, so after that scene, you see Molly and Issa talking. Uh, Flavor Flav is getting a facial or something. I don't know. Y'all, I haven't done a wing in so long, and this looks atrocious. So, Molly is getting her dog a facial or whatever, and her and Issa are just talking about her new job uh, at the new black firm. And so, I'm thinking, like, like, as she's talking and she's saying they have shea butter in the bathroom, I'm like, girl, you about to be woken because... That's not going to be the case. I already knew. I already knew it was going to be some mess at the um, new job. Because that's just black people for you. And I hate to be like that, but that's the truth. Like I was saying, basically Molly has very unrealistic expectations for her new job. And I'm sorry to say this, but when you work at a black mostly black filled employee kind of office or anything like that things kind of get I don't know just things are different they're different and I hate to say that as in like you know black people are not always on it but it's kind of the truth yeah that's all I gotta say about it so basically during that time, they start talking about Issa and talking about how she hasn't had her interview for the project manager, uh, the property manager job. 
and um then she ends up saying like you know why are you staying with daniel so long she was like well it's okay now since i'm staying on the couch i mean i'm staying in the bed and molly is like getting all tight about it like i don't even understand why she was upset or felt some type of way about Issa being in the bed with um daniel there's nothing in their way right now for them to be together other than vanessa i don't know if he's still with her or not but i don't know like how you have feel some type of way about her being in the bed with a single man when she is single <sighs> joe had a whole wife and you ain't care you wouldn't you didn't care so what what what's changing so what's changing everything so i don't understand why she felt some type of way and mm, isa single isa can do whatever she wants to do and so can daniel so let them be great girl why are you hating so that's how i felt about what she was saying so uh it pans over molly's first day and everything's going great uh, she's meeting everybody she's making jokes about how great it is to be working with black people which kind of rubbed me the wrong way how she kept saying like oh it's so great y'all are um oh look at this black magic we look like a mcdonald's commercial stuff like that i was just like girl you're trying too hard but it's okay so the next thing uh is khalil and daniel in the kitchen or whatever daniel showing khalil the beats he like daniel khalil basically he likes the beat or whatever but he knows that spider is not gonna like it that's what he basically says and he knows that old dude likes bass or something like that so he changes the the beat basically a little bit and daniel feels some type of way about it but anyways so now go back to isa isa is at work they're having a job fair because remember in the last episode she told joanne she was like i think we need more black people and so now they're at like a career fair so a lot of black people are coming up to them everything's you know going peachy they're getting some prospects and isa ends up walking off saying that she's going to go get lunch or something instead of her going to get lunch oh dang sorry is that ever going to get lunch? She ends up stopping because basically this or organization, kind of like hers, uh, called the Beat Crew, uh, they start performing. And so Issa's super fascinated by them. Oh, this is too much. I might as well do the other side. I like it. Issa gets super fascinated by them. And she ends up talking to the person and he ends up telling her about um, just their company and what they have going on and, you know, all that different stuff. And she's super fascinated and I'm like, new job alert, sis, sis got a prospect, she know what she like, you know, she wants to help kids that are um, in other areas like low income area to experience um different kinds of music and different kinds of culture and stuff like that which is something she's always been trying to do with we got y'all but it ain't been going as smoothly as you know but they be trying Ooh, that was too much Ugh. But anyways, so she's fascinated about that new company, the We, we no, it's the Beat Crew, and thinks the kids are really talented And after she sees them perform. And then as she's talking to the dude and getting more information, Frida's like, Issa, come back, we have a line. It was like two people in line. It was so funny. I was like, girl, leave me alone. <laughs> I thought it was so funny. But anyways, so now let's go back. Oh, wait. So he's about to have a new job alert. Y'all be ready. Sis moving on up. She leaving. Uh, all <laughs> we got y'all behind. <laughs> the next thing, it flashes back to Molly in her first day. And sis is... 
sis is noticing the differences. She's noticing it's not the same. Which she should have been noticed. Which she should have been known. Um, everywhere you work is not going to always be the same thing. So I don't get why she thought it was going to be better. Or, I mean, it could have been better. But so far, with the differences, it's not for her, I guess. Molly basically notices some differences and some changes in their place compared to the old place. And literally every time she notices something, she says it. She says, oh, um, I wrote it down what she says. Oh, we did things a little different at our, my old firm. And that's what she says every single time. And it's kind of like, sis, don't do that to them. Don't, don't do that to them. It's going to come back to you and bite you on the behind because why are you saying this to these black people? Why do you think it's okay? Why do you think it's okay to tell them that? Like over and over again, basically saying like, it's, it's kind of like her insulting them and telling them like, oh, y'all ain't up to par yet. Y'all ain't up to par like my old place. Well, sis, go back to your old place. Go. <laughs> like. That's what I feel like they can tell her because they're tired of it. Because I would be tired of it. Like, you're saying the same thing over and over again. But it's not like you're trying to change anything. It's not like you're doing anything to do better. Nothing. So, what's the point of you telling me this? What's the point of you talking? Sorry, that was mean. But yeah. So, uh after that Issa has her job interview basically she sees that the place is nice um dude asks her like do she know how to work a plunger and I'm like do she know how to work a plunger what she needs to work out know how to work a plunger for like a property manager don't you hire people for stuff like that so already I'm thinking it's about to be too much like it just seems like it is but you know when Issa finds out that the rent dropped from 1500 to 750 she's like oh no i need to get this i need to do this because this is going to be my new job so i guess that is pretty good rent price in la um but sis over here only used to pay 350 <laughs> like i don't know 750 do not sound good to me but you know what? To each his own. You got that money, sis, and you keep it going. But anyways, and even if I did get something for seven fifty, my mom's I think my mom's like mortgage is like seven eight hundred. So they better come with it like a three bedroom house or something, not one bedroom like the way she was living. But I understand that every place is different. So the cost of living is different in certain places but i'm just saying that was just a little expensive a little steep for me regardless even with a little discount so now it's Issa and daniel at the laundromat and basically some lady is walking around stealing people clothes but <laughs> other than that um Issa's basically telling daniel like oh i got a job interview and i think i'm going to take the job and he's basically saying like is you you won't be able to just you won't even be able to like make people give you rent and i can already see that too low-key like i don't see it i don't see her shaking nobody down for no rent just like he was saying so i don't know what to say Because I already picture Issa not being able to get rent from nobody. I picture them bothering her at all times of the night. Waking her up. Asking her to plunge they, they bathroom. Random stuff like that. Gonna be happening. And I already know it. So I hope Issa gonna be ready for that. But basically, um, Daniel wants her to stay. And that's the end of it. And I'm just like, stay sis. Don't get no extra job. Just stay. I would just stay because that's just me but you know be independent do your thing also Daniel tells Issa how he's upset about the Khalil thing and how he doesn't want to change his music and he wants to show Spider 
his music the way it is but basically Issa tells him like you can change and do whatever you want when you get famous basically that's what I get from it like when you when you get to the next level you can change and do whatever you want with your music but right now you're not there so take the criticism take take what old dude is giving you like and I agree with her because that happens sometimes and it gets annoying I know it is but you know what you just got to stick through it and keep going that's that's all I gotta say yeah but so the next thing uh like I said Molly gonna run around now because they didn't turn her office into the storage room and here she go again saying oh well they didn't do this at my we did things differently at my old office or we didn't do this or we did that at my old office sis it's not your old office go to your other office then go back go back then so now it's girls night out kelly um why can't i remember their other friend name and i know her real name is amanda and i love her and i follow her on instagram and I love watching her because um, I guess she's like a comedian or she's like a speaker or something. Um, but anyways, all four of them are out at girls night and basically Molly's just like, they're having a discussion about like why do black businesses always have to be the struggle? And I feel like that does happen. I There is a major difference from, but just from my experience, there is a major difference. I've worked at a black owned establishment versus um, with all black employees versus a white owned establishment. And it was totally different. It was totally different. I don't feel like every place is going to be like that. So I can't just base my one job experience. Just like, just like um, Molly can't base her one day on the rest of every black person or every black business um so yeah because i feel like black businesses are getting better and there are some out there that are already great but you know that show that's on uh tv what is it called uh, i don't know but it's like a chef show and basically um it's this black chef and he has a business and literally it's called the pink teacup and they showcase bad black business because they be fighting in there when they got customers it'd be a mess but i'd be watching but anyways the amanda seals character basically says like sis um this is my journey with the baby like i'm about to have this baby uh do i like that the baby is changing my body no but you know this is my journey and maybe that's yours so I was like, okay, girl, thanks for the words of wisdom. After that, they sit down at the table, and then Molly basically puts um, Issa's business out, saying that Issa is sleeping in the bed with Daniel. Um, Kelly's like, oh, you finally found a way to pay him. Ah. <laughs> so that was funny. So everybody's against it, and they're saying that she... Just because nothing's in the way right now for them to be together don't mean they need to be together. So I was like, I guess. I don't know why they care. They're trying to protect her, but I don't see how. I just felt like I just, I always been Team Daniel. And I told y'all from the beginning, from the job. So that's what happened. Now, Issa and Frida are having an interview with one of the new. Like, a new black girl that's trying to work at their place. And Issa's kind of, like, zoning out. Because I feel like she's realizing that this is not something she wants to do. And when she gets back to her desk, she starts looking up the beat crew. Because she's been at We Got Y'all for five years. And that's a long time. And for her to be back to square one, stapling papers and doing stuff that she don't want to do, kind of annoys me. So, and I know it annoys her too. So, in the next scene, Daniel and Khalil are showing Spider the new music. 
and basically Daniel ends up showing him the music before Khalil fixed it and Khalil looking at him like Nick uh. so basically he kind of ruined his trust and when Khalil was like oh well we also had another beat and Daniel showed him the other beat Spider couldn't choose which one he liked the most and part of me likes the one that Khalil did because I do like the beat like when you made the bass higher I think that's what it's called I don't know I'm not a you know, musician or nothing but I do like that that sound it it is for rappers I would think but anyways so when Spider can't choose Khalil was like well I got some other stuff for you and basically takes over the whole session and now Daniel is back to square one with nothing I'm back to saying the same thing what I said earlier like what Issa said at the laundromat like when you get to your point like when you get to your time when you can like when you're up to the next level you can do whatever you want but when you're on somebody else's time and somebody else is trying to put you on you need to listen to them as a mentor or whatever you're trying to do trying to help you you need to work with him don't be that person that's not working with each other and trying to strong arm your way in and i felt like that's what he was trying to do so now Issa takes daniel out to dinner just to thank him for everything basically uh he has an attitude and um i can understand why i mean i don't know you just see how daniel just daniel always be having an attitude low key i'm trying to put my lashes on y'all hold on anyways like i said daniel always low key be having an attitude but he was mad because the waiter didn't bring any water. He was mad that he just got his uh, appetizer when the other people at the other table didn't already got their meal. It was just a bunch of stuff. So, Issa literally, like, calms him down. And, like, I'm literally smiling at this part because, sis, you are a great person. Like, you're a good friend. Because when she was like, oh, look, um, it's Jay and Beyonce. And then she was like, oh, wait, it's Amira. It's us. <laughs> I was like, Issa, you're so funny. <laughs> I love you, girl. I love you. He tells Issa what happens. And Issa was like, why would you do that? You know, that's a good opportunity. Maybe you need to apologize to old dude. And he looks at her and laughs like i don't know why i'm taking advice from you you don't even know what you want to do like you don't even know you don't even have no passion or nothing about anything so i shouldn't even take no advice from you so i'm looking at him like oh well, excuse me sir whatever forget you then you know okay so then um Daniel has the audacity to be like, oh, well, I don't know why I would take advice from you. I'm always saving you from stuff and helping you out. And that's when Isa was like, oh, so that's what you think? And then the waiter comes and interrupts them. And then that's the end. Like, that's all we see. So then the next scene, we see them in the bed laying there. And I'm just like, oh, Lord. That's so awkward when you're laying in the bed with somebody that you just argued with but the good thing is Daniel was like I'm not gonna let her go to sleep you know mad at me I'm gonna talk to her so he starts talking to her and basically like he doesn't apologize but you know when people like some people don't say sorry some people start talking to you and that's their way of saying sorry so that's what he did and basically they end up facing each other and I mean he says like oh you know I was just mad about the Khalil thing and I took it out on you, blah, blah, blah. And then he basically said, goes on, like, like they face each other and then they start kissing. And just like in the beginning, you know, he goes down there to give Issa, you know, some stuff, some stuff. And you can just see Issa's face and she's like zoning out a little bit. I know she's thinking and I know what she's thinking about. I know she's thinking about what her friends were saying. Because that's what I would be doing. Cause that's just me like when your friends get in your head and they told you something and now you just you just can't get it out damn it so now you just can't 
stop thinking about it like now that's in your head and you can't get over it and that's when you realize like they not they know what's best for you but they're looking at it at another viewpoint and maybe their viewpoint might align with what you need to do if that makes any sense so she ends up telling him like this doesn't feel right and he stops and that's the end of the scene you just see them land next to each other looking off into space and that's awkward so I don't know I just I don't like how it ended I don't like that he did um I don't like that he came at her because it made it seem like oh Issa I would never take advice from you because you never have your stuff together you never will have your stuff together and it's like he what I felt from that moment was he felt as sh though she was a crutch. So at that dinner, when she told him, I forgot to say this, she told him later on that um, she was going to take the job as the property manager because she just needs to get out of there. And uh, now that she did that, like now that she told him and after all that stuff happened, I'm happy she's leaving because I just... I wouldn't want to be in a situation like that. I wouldn't want to be a crutch. Or he was always telling her like, "Oh, it's not a problem for you to stay here. It's not a problem for you to stay here. I like you here, blah blah." blah. But for you to jump on me and say, "You know, I'm always bailing you out. I'm always helping you." That's you throwing it in her face, and that's you basically validating that she is a crutch, and you see her as one. So. Mm -mm. But it was a pretty good episode. I really am happy that Issa is finally going to be getting out of Daniel's house. She needs to. I I feel like like she said she said in the in the scene when they were at dinner she was like this way we can figure things out with each other you know in our separate spaces and I think that's good because um, it's kind of weird from weird them to figure things out while they're living together it especially being in somebody else's space kind of gets awkward especially if y'all don't know what y'all are doing and the way he kind of came at her just kind of messed things up and made things weird so and the last scene the sex no sex scene is another weird thing and it's it's it makes me think about like in the last I think it was the first episode where she she pushed away from him when he tried to kiss her but then later on told him her feelings and now she's pushing away from him again like is the next episode she gonna be like oh well I wanted it like I don't understand Issa you need to get your life together you need to figure out what you're doing cuz I don't know I'm a little confused myself and I know Daniel's super confused so it's good for both of them for her to move out so yeah um that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys enjoyed this simple quick makeup look too because i actually have to go somewhere today so yeah so i will see you guys in the next one don't forget to like comment and subscribe and queen beauty out